So we have multiple constraints here. Um, the, the idea behind it, if you have multiple constraints, then you have one multiplier for one constraint and the second multiplier for the, for the second constraint. Okay, so basically, you can either write lambda 1 and lambda 2, or just uh, we'll use uh, lambda and mu uh, for, for each other. <coughs> okay, so we use uh, one Lagrange multiplier for each constraint. So here's the example. I think it's example four in our list. Again, find max min. F of x, y, z equal uh, 4y minus 2z subject to um, the constraint. Uh, the first constraint is 2x minus y minus z equals 2. And the other constraint is uh, x squared plus y squared equals 1. So the solution, the way we set it up, uh, we set it up uh, with two um, <coughs> Lagrange uh, multipliers. So we're going to say that del f of x, y, z is going to be, um, let's say, delta, I'm sorry, del, uh, the gradient of f. Uh, will be del the lambda times the gradient of g plus another Lagrange multiplier, let's call it mu, and another constraint, we'll call it h uh, of x, y, z. Okay? Where g equals the first constraint and h equals the second constraint. So how we set it up? Let's set it up and take the derivative with respect to, z to x is 0. And we'll have lambda multiplying what? Uh, what is the derivative with respect to x here? It's 2. Lambda times 2. And mu times 2x. OK? OK? The second. Uh, <coughs> the derivative of f with respect to y will be 4 lambda times uh, negative 1 plus mu times uh, 2y. And the, th the third, the left, the z will be negative 2 uh, lambda times uh, negative 1 plus mu times 0. So, um, and the last two equations will be uh, 2x minus y minus z equals 2, and x squared plus y squared uh, equals 1. So we do have a system of five equations with five variables, x, y, z, lambda, mu. And we need to solve for it. Okay? So we, the first thing we can see that here because mu multiplied by 0, then negative 2 equals negative lambda, or lambda equals 2. Now, that makes a lot uh, life a little bit easier, okay? And then we'll look at this equation, the first equation. Uh, so we go right here, and we say, all right, if lambda equals 2, then 2 times 2, 4 plus uh, 2 mu x equals 0. So we have this equation. If lambda equals 2, here we have 4 equals negative uh, 2 plus 2 mu y. 
right? This one we already dealt with. So now we can I have a lot of beeping on my phone. Uh, so now we can do the following. We can go to um, what equation? We uh, we can say that from here we have x equals negative 4 divided by 2 mu or negative 2 over mu and from here we have y uh, 2 mu y equals 6 or y equals 3 divided by mu okay this is from this equation and this is from this equation so now we plug it into the first con the second constraint and the second constraint we have because in the second constraint we have only y and z and so we don't have to worry about the uh, the x here so let's see uh, I'm sorry the second constraint we have only x and y so now we can solve from u so plug in so x squared plus y squared equals 1 becomes x squared is uh, negative 2 over mu squared plus 3 over mu squared equals 1 and we solve from u and turn out that we have 4 plus 9 over mu squared or 13 over mu squared equals 1 and therefore mu equals plus minus square root of 13. We have that, and now we have value for x. So x equals plus minus, uh, actually, let's look at the first case when we take the positive value of mu, okay? So let mu equals positive square root of 13. In this case, x equals uh, negative 2 over square root of 13 and y equals positive 3 over square root of 13 what about z? well we use the th the this uh, constraint to find z so in this case uh, we look, look at the concern 2a uh, to the constraint 2x minus y minus z equals 2 and this becomes uh, negative 4 over square root of 13 minus 3 over square root of 13 minus z equals 2 so you have negative 7 so z equals negative 7 over square root of 13 um, so the result is I'll write it uh, z equals negative 2 minus 7 square root of 13. Okay, so now we have a set. Uh, what happened when, so the solution will be x, y, z equals negative 2 square root of 13, 3 square root of 13, and negative 2 minus 7 square root of 13. Not the best, most comfortable solution and we need to evaluate the function for these values. And what happens if mu equals uh, negative square root of 13? This was for positive. Well, uh, the solution is going to be, I'm going to jump because I'm out of time, but if you plug it in, you have the solution going to be uh, 2 square root of 13 minus square 3 square root of 13 and the last solution would be negative 2 plus 7 square root of 13. What are the corresponding function values? Okay. Here the corresponding, the corresponding uh, function value will be uh, 4 
4 plus 26, so hmm, I didn't leave myself room to write. So this will be solution 1 and this will be solution 2. Okay, so solution 1, f of, uh, uh, let's, what the heck, let's write it. If you evaluate it, it will be 4 plus 26 over square root of 13. And obviously, maximum over there. And solution 2, f of positive 2 square root of 13, negative 3 square root of 13, and negative 2 plus 7 over square root of 13. Is n is four minus twenty six square root of thirteen, and this is an obvious minimum. All right. So, uh, what I didn't show you: what happens if you have a a disk? If you have inequal inequality as a constraint. So, but it's in the textbook, I think. Uh, so try to figure this out. Uh, if not, I'll talk about it on Friday. I'll let you know tomorrow or tonight whether we have a lab and we meet in X123 or we meet here if we don't have a lab. You okay? Roberto, you okay, bud? <laughs>